Hey everyone, it's Alex and welcome to the Marvel Snap Decks of the Week, the weekly series where I showcase the top 10 best decks in Marvel Snap. And if you'd like to support my content, consider hitting the like button. It helps tremendously. With that being said, let's go start with deck number 10. Now, this is a Madam Web Lockjaw deck. It's running a 55% win rate, but a relatively low cube rate at 0.18. This cube rate is basically like the kind of level where if you want to experiment with a new type of deck, give it a shot. But I wouldn't be relying on this particular list to carry you into like high infinite or anything like that. I wouldn't take it into infinity conquest. But it's a pretty interesting application of Madam Web. Now, Madam Web as a whole is underperforming what you know consensus believed was going to be her approximate performance. She's running a 48% win rate in infinite right now. Now, which is again below expectations but we're seeing her performing in a number of different shells that are not necessarily move which i find personally really fascinating and something i identified in my uh, original review video when i released my first impressions um Madam Web is pretty interesting in Lockjaw because Lockjaw is now a four-costed card that can once again repeatedly reproc uh, its effect so what you can do is you can play Lockjaw into Madam Web play a card or two, and then move the lockjaw elsewhere, and then keep playing into it, right? That's a pretty interesting application. The cube rate's not there, sure, but I think it's partially because lockjaw's been awkward ever since it got moved to a four cost. Three costed lockjaw, it was, it was a dream. It was an absolute dream, right? But again, it was also a very disruptive card. But regardless, I want to showcase this deck because I thought it was a very interesting application of this week's new card, Madam Web, and perhaps it gets your uh, ideas flowing with regards to Brew. Now, this is a relatively low play rate deck, so these stats can change. Maybe a couple of you gamers out there get your hands on this deck and rise those stats. Who knows? A lot can happen in a week of Marvel Snap. Number nine takes us to Hitmonkey. Hitmonkey is pretty interesting because I like this deck because it has nothing of her five and six. Obviously, your most expensive card is Gwenpool here. And you as agent is really effective in this deck because you're hitting everything that your opponent might be playing, but almost nothing of yours, provided you can manage to get Gwenpool out of that uh, US agent lane. But really, this is a really high start, uh, statted deck here. Hitmonkey has kind of been a card that's been slept on quite a bit, but at 0.34 cube rate and a 56% win rate, this deck is performing. It's also worth noting that Elsa Bloodstone is probably, I'm not going to say it's underappreciated, but it's definitely a card we're not seeing a lot right now. Like, the deck is just pretty well-rounded here. Um, it's not a bounce list, even though you do have the Kitty Pride and Angela. You're not running Thena in this particular package either. But overall, I mean, the statistics support that this deck is pretty solid, so I wanted to include it because I think that it is a great kind of look for what a new Hitmonkey deck might look like in the modern meta. Going to number eight here, we're going to go to Oddbolt. Now, this deck has been in and out of the meta over the last month or two. Uh, I really like it a lot. It's really good use of Moon Knight to essentially, I mean, it pretty much has to hit Proxima for the most part because everything else is oddly costed, right? That's why it's called Oddbolt. And uh, I, I do like the Black Bolt stature combination for some disruption when you add in the fact that you're Cassandra nova you're Moon Knighting, you got the Viper Hood. You're putting up some stats while doing disruption on both the board and their hand. A really interesting approach approach to what disruption uh, traditionally has been in Marvel Snap. 57% win rate, which is on the high end, but a relatively modest cube rate at 0.26. Overall, an interesting deck, one that I've been having fun playing. Black Bolt's still good. Would like to see it as a 5-8 five, uh, five, if I could, but uh, ultimately a really good deck that also has Darkhawk as a closer. A number of different packages being mixed in here in Oddbolt to ultimately make it a pretty reliable list. And as we go to number 7 here, it's this discard it's just straight up discard it's performing well 57 percent win rate here and we got a 0.29 cube rate and uh, what i like about the uh, discard decks are that like they're just making a comeback because of those alliance missions that's all that happened this card effectively just kind of died i mean discard hella was going insane for a while that got nerfed and then regular discard was pretty good for a while too and then you know just a couple pure points of power taken off here and there then i mean they're giving back to apocalypse ultimately but I like the way these decks are playing right now. And, I mean, the stats are pretty solid. They're not, like, incredible like they were prior, but they're just solid. And I'm glad that those Alliance missions kind of brought Discard back into the meta to some degree. So, if you want to play some Discard, you definitely can. Um, because it's it's better than people realize it is, right? So, it's good to see a classic archetype making some waves once again. Now, 
when I was discussing Madam Web on my first impressions video, I said that like I was really enjoying Madam Web in ongoing of all places. I found it pretty ironic that move was less fun and less uh, kind of impactful for me than straight up ongoing. And I discussed how Miss Marvel was a great choice for Madam Web because you could rearrange your board state to obviously take advantage of Miss Marvel and proc the effect. If you got to get your Howard the Duck into that location, you can. If you got to move something in with Ebony Moss, you can proc the Miss Marvel. You can do that too. This deck is a fantastic deck, a 57% win rate, a 0.31 cube rate. It's running the new War Machine, which is great because there's another deck we're going to talk about soon that completely locks you out of the game by turn six. So if you don't have your own War Machine, you're probably not playing very often, and that get deck is gaining in popularity. But overall, it's a pretty good ongoing deck here. We got a lot going here, and uh, I think that with ongoing too, you can make a number of different modifications depending on like your pocket meta, the flavor of the week, whatever it is you want. You've got so many answers here, right? So many answers for you to kind of make a little bit of magic happen. So I'm, I'm glad that Miss Marvel and Madam Web are kind of making a comeback together because uh, Miss Marvel is a card that I think has been completely forgotten about, but it still puts up a tremendous amount of power, right? You just need the agency to ensure you can get that power going. Junk is a bit of a problem. Junk tends to mess up Miss Marvel pretty hard hard but ultimately the deck's performing well 57 percent win rate in a 0.31 cube rate can't argue that going to the top five here we do have control machine and this is what i was referring to 57 percent win rate 0.32 cube rate you'll notice these 57 percent win rate decks are very very tight statistically but this one here um i know i had a flavor of this as well it's basically the war machine storm and legion combination which shuts down turn six if you need more power, you drop the Infinite. If you need wider power, you drop the Doom. Uh, I like the Crossbones inclusion here. Makari's been making these decks because obviously you just want the power on the board however you can get it there. Makari does exactly that. Goose prevents them from playing. Ebony Maw, who cares about Ebony Maw when you have yourself a War Machine, right? So these control decks have been great. However, the core factor here is, of course, your War Machine into, uh, sorry, Storm into War Machine Legion very frustrating to play against it feels similar to what like spider-man absorbing man felt like the classic one where you would like spider-man a location then absorbing man and then you're like hey i guess i just don't play turn six like this is fun i guess and this is similar right people that don't have war machine are finding this kind of gameplay frustrating and i don't know if it survives the way this is um war machine is very strong right now and this combination feels really really kind of just bad to play against right and a 0.32 cube rates high considering that almost no one's going eight cubes on this right like at best you get four cubes because you the, they snapped early you snap back and then all of a sudden you, you storm uh, war machine legion and they're like well i guess i leave i can't even play turn six so the aq potential is really low here but generally speaking a very strong deck and uh i don't know if war machine remains as it is like i know it just got buff but like it's oh man this is crazy it's kind of weird how good these decks are playing I hate to bring it up, but I mean, Erisham's play rate has completely fallen off a cliff. Like, people just aren't playing much Erisham. But it's still running a 57% win rate and a 0.33 cube rate. It's still good. Like, Erisham is still good 100%. And you got the Loki. Of course you got the Loki. Um, it's just a good list. Like, there's nothing to take away from the fact that this deck is good. It has a lot of surprise in Legion. It has the Enchantress, which is crushing the meta right now. Um, I did some experimentation with this deck. I, I don't like playing Erisham too much because, like, I don't know. I just want to play things that are that annoying for people. And uh, so, but, like, Enchantress is so good right now because, like, they're so... Well, I just finished showing a, 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 a Madam Web ongoing deck but there's still people experimenting with the move just knocking out the madam web knocking out ongoing cards there's so many answers that enchantress provides even for the four uh, five stat line it used to be a four six remember when it was a four six and everyone was going crazy for it Eliath is still a stealer of cubes with uh with airsham because you get to play it out on turn five if you so wish and ultimately like the deck's just still good, guys. It is still good. If you have Airshow and you want to play something a little different, Cassandra Nova is still very popular, though. Its percentage played is over 20%. So that's still a factor. But uh, generally speaking, Airshow still in a very good spot. As we move into our top three, we go to Toxic Evo. Now, this one here I included because the win rate is very high, but the cube rate is very low. And I was kind of uncomfortable with the idea of including a deck this high on the top 10 based on its cube rate alone at a 0.18, which is just, it just doesn't cut it for top three. But the win rate's high enough that I wanted to include it. Also, I know that there's a lot of Ajax believers out there that really want to talk about like kind of like Ajax's capabilities. And this deck in this meta is doing pretty good in the, in the sense that like, I think that Red Guardian is just like, an excellent card right now us agent a solid card and yes ajax abomination like you have a lot of that top end it's interesting that you have a high evo deck without halt you know without uh, she hulk without infinite 
So a very different look, but a very toxic look in Toxic Evo. So I want to showcase it because it is one of the highest win rate decks in the game right now. But it's cube rate, I think is a little lackluster. So maybe again, maybe some of you gamers out there take this deck and kind of pump the stats or we crash it right out of the top 10. But I just want to showcase it because of its win rate. But I do think the, the cube rate is a little bit on the suspect side. And then we got Agatha. Man, Agatha is making a comeback. A lot of videos hitting the YouTubes with Agatha here. And uh, listen, the card is very, very different than it once was. And uh, you got a lot of synergies and stuff like, hey, you got the wave, you got the uh, the Lady Sif. You got all that stuff still, but enough agency early on that like you can actually you can make some plays, right? And Ag Agatha's uh, 14 power is not insignificant to be brought down from Ghost Rider, right, or whatever. So... A really interesting deck, and also note as well that Moon Knight will likely hit Agatha, could potentially hit Ghost Rider, I guess, but generally speaking, like, really good targets here, a lot of disruption happening, and I like the Black Bolt stature combination, I know I just asked for a Black Bolt buff, but like, <laughs> it's just in another top, top deck, right, but... It's really interesting how Agatha, a little bit of a change to the idea of how Agatha's played, has completely changed everything. And I'm glad the bot farmers are gone, man. That, that had to go eventually. So they kind of saw, it was like two birds, one stone situation with Agatha. They made it a deck that's at least interesting to play, potentially even really good, and also got rid of the AFK farming that was happening as well. So Agatha's in a good spot. 60% win rate and a 0.41 cube rate on this deck. That is very high stats. And as we move on to our number one deck of the week, a reminder, we're on our way to 100,000 subscribers. We're almost there. And if you have not hit that subscribe button yet, consider hitting the subscribe button. I would sincerely appreciate it. About half of you guys are not yet subscribed. But uh, you know what? A lot of you are. 95,000 of you are. And I, I love each one of you. Thank you so much for your, your kind support. And I know you can see it here. I couldn't believe it either, but believe it or not, Zoo is currently, as of uh, in Infinite, as of the latest patch, running a 64% win rate at a 0.4, sorry, 0.54 cube rate. It is smashing, smashing right now. And I think it's probably because, like, people stopped playing Killmonger because, like, Surf Surfer is not quite in this top 10 yet, even though I think Surfer is good, it's just not being played. And so, like, Killmonger kind of went away. Everyone's fixating on Madam Web, and then we're like, okay, well, I'll just play Zoo, I guess, and just smash everyone with Silver Sable and everything else is going on. This deck just crushes. Like, there's nothing else to it. It's, it's like, it's including Silver Sable, where Nico was traditionally kind of in some ways. It's just crushing. Like, the deck is doing amazing, and the stats are, like, there's a lot of games played on it, too. It's just good. It's just good. If you're trying to get to high infinite or whatever, like, you, I mean, you could brew some new crazy stuff, but you could also just play Zoo and get there too. Like, it is so good right now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I truly appreciate each and every one of you that engages with my content, and we'll see you on that next one.